Hey guys, Zen here, and the floodgates for the next year of Rainbow Six Siege have opened, and man, there is a wealth of new information that's been shown off. This next chapter of the game is actually a transitional period, where the developers are letting go of the old Siege and moving into a new vision for the game that shakes up some sacred mechanics that have been the norm since the beginning. The Year 6 roadmap has us visiting some of the most unique CTUs we've experienced yet. An all-new look to the identity of Rainbow Six Siege has modernized it and highlights its operators, the most valuable asset it has, and even a new operator representing a part of the LGBTQ community, which is a first of all time for Rainbow Six Siege. To be honest, Siege has never seen as much change as this next year is promising to bring, and to some, that may be tough to accept, but to some others, it could be the single greatest thing this game could ever accomplish. And so for this video, we're getting into it all. Now, it all begins with an entirely different look to Rainbow Six Siege. What you'll notice when you boot up the game for the first time in year six is a brand new key art and even an updated logo. So the key art is essentially the splash screen that shows up once you first start up the game, and is also the headline of any media outlet talking about it, so you'll see this all the time. It's the embodiment of the game, and it's more important than you may think. The original key for Siege was simple, no name, no face operators bursting through either side of a wall, and it's because in the beginning, the focus was purely on destruction, and that's what was being marketed. But as we all know, Siege is nothing without its operators, and that's what's been brought front and center with the new look, and why they're displayed so prominently here. Now, there's also a new and updated logo for Rainbow Six Siege, and I love the reasoning behind it. They wanted to hone in on the word Siege and make it stand out because it represents the world we've all come to love and I think it's a clean look that's not too far of a departure from the original but definitely works to emphasize the core of the community. And yeah, logos can be a disaster and I think this is done flawlessly. They've also introduced a new look to the Operator album which is nice, but they finally mentioned an update to the abysmal weapon skin and charm selection screen which is something that's needed an update since launch and so they've cleaned it up, organized it, and shows skins in the menu like actually on the weapons which for for me, it's just huge. Now, an update to the branding of a game is usually very rare, especially one with millions of players, because a change like that could alienate even the audience that's extremely familiar with it. But it's clear that Ubisoft wants the world to know that Siege is changing and is evolving from what's been kind of mundane over the years, and it honestly takes a lot of confidence to make a move like this and believe so purely in the change. It's a statement, and it means Rainbow Six Siege is becoming new again. And so every new year of Siege opens with a roadmap, and year six is a first, and that this is the year of every season introducing only one new operator. For season one, we visit Argentina and have been introduced to Flores. Season two explores the Nakoda, which were some of the first nations in North America and should feature a gadget that's more mechanical, like Frost, rather than ultra futuristic. In season three, we're moving over to Croatia, and then to wrap up the year, we finish off season four with an operator from Ireland. And this is by far one of the most anticipated CTUs because our Irish community has immense home pride and have been patiently awaiting this moment. And it'll be amazing to be a part of it. As for the maps offering, in Season 1, we'll get a rework to Border, and in Season 2, we're returning with another casual rework, kind of like House was, but this time for Favela. Now, Season 3 is the most unique, maybe ever, because there's going to be smaller changes, not full-on reworks, but tune-ups, so to speak, on a few maps. So usually in a season, there's either a brand new map or a full-on rework that upgrades the map to fit it better with the current meta, but with Season 3, they've mentioned many maps being adjusted, and so the complete offering should be a little more competitive. For me, I think console bank and coastline could use some updates to help with an overall better flow, but there could be many more, and so I think these kinds of minor adjustments are a welcome change. And then to finish up is Outback, technically the newest map in Rainbow Six Siege, and also the map with an over 90% ban rate. Altogether, it's one of the better roadmaps in a while, and I know there are a lot of people very happy with this early example of it. Now next up is the brand new operator for Year 6 Season 1, Floris, and his Rotero RC car. But just before we talk about the experience of the operator, it's important to note how you'll gain access to this new operator and every new operator moving forward because there's been a massive change. So instead of locking ops behind a year pass, Ubisoft has completely ditched the year's pass model and instead new operators are claimed as an instant unlock for taking up the premium battle pass. Now the battle pass works as it always has and there's still the 100 or so tiers to dig through but once you go premium you'll gain access to the new operator and that early access will last for a period of two weeks which is an additional week to how it's always worked. So to get Floris upon release you just pick up the premium pass and get to work with this incredible new operator. And so, Floris is a two-speed, two-armor operator with one of the most versatile and powerful gadgets that the attacking side has seen in a very long time. The RC car, or internally known as Hamster, is a drone-like gadget that constantly moves forward until the time reaches out or you choose to arm it, in which case it becomes completely bulletproof and explodes, causing huge damage. This gadget does actually have the ability to kill an enemy if they're close enough, but it takes roughly three seconds before it explodes and 
during that time, it makes an incredibly loud and obvious sound, giving a defender time to get away. So it is constantly moving forward, which means once it's deployed, you can't stop it from moving. It does turn and jump and otherwise act like a drone, but it does always accelerate until its timer runs out and it'll then bunker down, become bulletproof and erupt. Its two main counters are mute and mozzie, which obviously jam it from doing its thing. And then there is the ability to shoot it out while it's on the move because it's only bulletproof once it locks down. I think the balance here is just perfect. And I think there's still plenty of time for a defender to move out of the area. And of course, a plus is that because this is so useful, it makes a strong case for bringing mute, which I think has been pretty underrated. Now, there are so many use cases for this, but I think one of its strongest suits is post plant protection. The attackers do have some forms of this utility currently, like gridlock or nomad, or of course the tried and true claymore. But in almost every case, those have to be pre-placed and a lot of the time can be easily shot out or countered. With the RC car, it's very easy to hide out and wait for those last few precious seconds, send out the car and force the defender to either stop defusing and shoot it out or risk getting blown up mid defuse. It really is huge for this meta. And I think some of the most intense post plant situations are possible with an active Flores. Now there's also the ability to soft breach with it, where you can jump onto a wall, the hamster will stick to it and lock down. And of course, after a few seconds, the wall opens up. Again, there's so much utility here with gadget destruction, post plant denial. It's a drone by nature. So the Intel factor, and of course it's raw lethality. I love this new gadget and see it as viable each and every round. If you really want to start maining him. Now, Flores also has a really solid loadout that's led by the AR 33, a classic assault rifle that's never gotten enough use from Thatcher, but will finally be given a spotlight here. He also has the SR 25 DMR, the one from Blackbeard and a GSH 18 pistol as a secondary. He's well-rounded with a 2.0 sight on the AR and a 3.0 on the DMR. And so there's not too much to fault here. Now, the backstories of these operators are becoming more and more important. And Flores is one of passion. He has this Robin Hood mentality of taking from the rich to give to the poor. And he used to steal from the crime lords in LA in heroic fashion. He's also a married man and takes his relationship with his husband very serious. Gridlock says he calls home to speak with him every night. And even when he takes off his ring, it's always on his person. Rainbow Six Siege has always been praised for its depictions of different CTUs and countries. And it's something they do a phenomenal job with. But now it has a form of representation that's not often explored in video games, which is commendable. But alongside a brand new operator is a new secondary weapon, or I guess tool, but it's called the Gone Six and it's exclusive to the attackers. Now the Gone Six is a new addition that's loaded up with just one shot, but that shot has the ability to destroy pretty much any defender utility in the round. Really anything from deployable shields to maestro cams can be taken out with this thing, but it does come at somewhat of a cost. It's a secondary weapon, technically, even if it does next to no damage to an operator. And so with an operator like Dokubi, you have to choose whether or not to bring an SMG 12 or the Gone 6, which isn't an easy choice. Yes, you do have the ability to handle defender gadgets like maybe Ash or Zove, but it's only one shot. So it really has to be worth it. I don't know. For me, on some ops, I kind of get it. Like with Zero, it's not the end of the world to swap out with a pistol, but a secondary weapon holds you down big when the primary runs dry. And this Gone 6 can't clean up for you if it's needed. And so personally, I see this as more of a tool for a highly organized team where everyone is communicating and knows their roles. But otherwise, you will miss that secondary weapon if you choose to trade it out. And it doesn't make holes large enough to walk through either. So soft breaching utility really isn't there. I like it. I see its use, but it is a tough trade here. Moving on to the rework this season with Border. And to be honest, guys, this is the lightest rework I think Rainbow Six Siege has ever done. The majority of the map is unchanged. And once you step in, you'll know exactly where everything is. But the changes that have been made are incredibly impactful. And I think will ultimately change up the flow. For instance, the inside balcony now has a bridge that connects top east stairs with break room. It's good for both attack and defense and makes getting in and out of those areas far more accessible. I also think the changes made to the bathroom teller site makes it pretty viable and much easier for the defenders to confidently hold. There really isn't too much else here to go crazy over. It's still border through and through, but the slight tweaks are appreciated and should make the map a little less bland and more competitive. And then finally, to wrap this video up, we've got the ultimate version of Kali. The shipment has landed and she's suited up in her master frame protocol uniform, which will actually be available well before the launch of year six season one. But man, let's get into this.
And so guys, year six is the beginning of an all new siege. And for me, it's one of the most exciting times to be dialed in and investing in this game. But that's it for our video today, guys. There are still huge topics to get into and discuss. And so get subscribed with notifications turned on so you're here for when that content is ready. Drop a like if you enjoyed. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Hey. I'm out.